Welcome back guys, it's Israel. Have you been working recently with your .NET 9 API and then you make a request to it from your front end application and you see something kind of like this and you're like, a cores error? What is that? Why am I even seeing that? Well, in this video, I'm gonna explain what it is and how to easily fix it in your .NET API so you're good to go. And now let's get into it. But first I wanna quickly shout out all my channel members if you wanna show up here, as well as get access to all the code from all my videos, click the link in the description or the join button on my profile and then send an email to this email right here with the code you want access to. But now into the video. So cores errors in .NET, they're gonna say something like this, that it's been blocked by a cores policy, like the image I showed at the beginning, or one that looks like this. But now, what is it? Well, cores stands for cross-origin resource sharing. A cores error occurs when an application or website not running on the same domain as another app or website requests data and does not have the necessary permissions to access that data, causing the browser to throw the error. Usually you run into it for the first time when working with a front end and back end application. I know the very first time I ever started working with front end and back end, I got this error and was like, what, what is this? I've never seen this type of thing. And then it took me a while to actually learn, oh, this is a browser thing. This is a security thing. And it really happens when you have applications sending data between each other and they don't have the exact same domain. And you might ask, what is a domain? Well, let me explain in a second. A domain is really, in this example that we have right here, like localhost 8080. So this is on a different port than this. This is 5000. This is 8080. So these are two different domains. If they had the same port, they'd be the same domain and you'd be like, okay, the browser would be like thumbs up. But since they're different domains, different ports, you're going to get this error. So a cores error looks like this. So you have your front end application right here. So this would be your React project, your Angular project, whatever front end framework you have, it's right here. So it's obviously going to send a request to your API in your server. So in this example, and like the one I'm going to do in a little bit, it's going to be a get weather. So you're just getting weather data. So you're going to send a request out to localhost 8080, get weather. Here's where your API is right here, your .NET 9 API and your front end applications here. So you send the request out to your API. Your API is like, okay, well, here's some data, right? Like it's not my problem. I don't have any policy that tells me not to do anything about this. So I'm going to send it through. But then your browser at this point right here, Chrome, whatever, blah, 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 is going to be like, wait, these are two different domains. This could be a security threat. This could be a little risky. Let's cancel it out. And then that's how you get a cores error. So how do you fix a cores issue? Well, you need to make sure that you give the appropriate access to the requesting domain. This can be done by telling the server or API to allow requests from a specific domain by allowing requests from a specific origin. Another more advanced way to get around the cores issue is by using a reverse proxy server to forward requests with the correct headers for the server. An example of this would be NGINX. And if you guys want me to cover that in a future video, let me know in the comments section. But in this video, I wanna cover the easiest way to do this for your .NET 9 or .NET 8. API. But now onto the easiest way. So as you guys can see, we are at the project. I just went ahead and created a standard .NET 9 API, literally have changed nothing from the defaults as we have the weather forecast controller and the weather forecast class here. As you guys know, if you created a .NET API anytime in the last handful of years, you know that the weather forecast is the default. So let me just run the API real quick, just to show you guys what we have. So as of .NET 9, we don't have Swagger anymore, so you can add it in, or you can go ahead and use Scalar. If you guys want me to do a video on that as well, let me know in the comments section. Um, so we have Scalar here. As you guys can see, we have a weather forecast that just goes and gets the weather. So again, the default for .NET APIs. And then on the front end, I have this Angular application running that I've used in past videos. So it just looks something like this. It is just this application here. Ignore this stuff. This is for other videos, Google sign in, Facebook authentication and logging in. Uh, but you see this button right here that says talk to .NET 9 API. This is the one that we're going to be clicking to show the cores error and then how to fix it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and run my API. And now let's go ahead and test this and see if without changing anything in our program, we don't get a cores error. Spoiler, we're going to get a cores error. So let's open up our front end application. Now that we're back at our Angular application, let's test to see what we get. So let's click the talk to the .NET 9 API. Click that. We see that we hit in here. But like you remember from the diagram, it's when we come back and then the browser throws the error. So let's press continue. 
We see that over here, we got no success. Now something, we're supposed to get like a little pop-up that says it was good. So let's inspect. And we can see in our console, something right here. We see that we have this request from origin 4200 has been blocked by course policy. So the API has nothing that says that that specific origin 4200 is allowed to access data from our API. So now let's go ahead and fix it. So what we're going to do is go to our API and we're going to change this code in program. So we're going to be using the built-in NuGet package from Microsoft. That's going to be Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.Cores to go ahead and do this cores policy. So the code that we're going to be adding is the following. So we're going to go in here to builder and we're going to move this in here. And then we're going to do this as well under app. And let me explain what's going on in here. So now that I've put in this code, let me explain to you what it's doing. So in our services, we're adding cores as a service, and now we're going to create a policy. We're going to name it cores policy. And now let me explain to you what's going on in here. So in our policy, we're going to say that we want to allow these specific origins. So in our case, we're going to do localhost 4200 because that is where our Angular application is. In a more production setting in the future, let's say, you would want to also add like your www uh, dot my URL dot com or something of that nature, because you would then want to also allow that production origin to also have access to your API. And it's a good habit and it's a better habit, I think, than allowing any origin or allowing wildcard because that can just be a security risk. Moving on, we have allow any method. This is basically allowing any type of get, put, post and delete type of request. So if your API has all those types of endpoints, you obviously want to allow the ability for these uh, front end applications to hit it. And then we get to allow any headers. It's basically, again, telling the browser that we're allowing specific custom headers to be included with these requests. And then when we're getting to allow credentials, again, we're basically saying that we want to include our cookies or tokens in all of our requests. And that's they're good to go. They're fine. Don't throw any errors about it. And with that being said, the last thing that we need to add is app.useCores and then the course policy, because that's the name of it, to make sure that when our application starts, it's actually using this course policy and we don't forget to actually have it there. But with that being said, that is all the code that we need to add in our .NET API. So now let's actually test this and see if now that course issue is gone. But real quick, right before we do that, if you guys have found this video helpful, please drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the other wonderful content that I have for you guys. So my API is now running after adding in that cores policy. So now let's actually go to our front end and actually see if that cores issue is gone. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to my front end. We can still see that we have the talk to .NET 9 API button. I'm going to open up my dev tools. We're going to have that right here. I'm going to go ahead and click this. We see that we get a success now. We didn't get that one before. So we're going to see if we go into our console, we're not seeing any more cores issues and we're actually getting the reply of the objects about the weather forecast. Um, and with that, we fixed the cores issue. So you've learned about cores errors, what they are and how to fix them and how a cores policy can help secure your .NET API just a little bit more. But do you want to learn even more about more advanced topics? Well, click on these videos right here that go into depth on tokens, policies, cookies, all that good stuff to help secure your .NET API even more. So I hope to see you there.